story to tell. The frog was square wing design, was once considered a revolution in aircraft manufacturing, but for various reasons, this design was not widely used. The first frog was square wing aircraft in the world was the Nazi Met Junkers Ju-87 bomber in 1944. The frog was square wing design was supposed to help the aircraft operate more efficiently at low altitudes. There were two Ju-87 prototypes built, but due to the failure of the Nazis, this project was not completed. After Soviet Union entered Berlin, they seized a lot of documents of the Ju-87 to build their OKB-1-140 forward square wing jet bomber. Two OKB-1-140 prototypes were completed, but like the Ju-87, it was also cancelled in 1950. As a science and technology power, the United States did not stand out in the arms race. General Dynamic launched the F-16 SFW with forward square wing based on the F-16A platform in 1976. However, the fate of the F-16 SFW soon ended when engineers realized the manufacturing of the aircraft is very complicated, time-consuming, and costly. In early 1981, Grumman X-29 Life Fighter project was selected. According to calculations, they will have a fighter with superior features compared to the F-16, but the size is compact, early equivalent to the F-5. Grumman created two experimental X-29 prototypes. To reduce production cost of the X-29, Grumman also took advantage of the machinery and systems of other aircraft, such as F-14 or F-16. The aircraft first flew in 1984 and two X-29s were fly-tested through 1991. The overall shape of the X-29 is quite similar to that of the F-5 Freedom Fighter, which is not uncommon because Grumman built it from the airframe of two existing Northrop F-5A fighters. The X-29 design made use of the forward fuselage and nose landing gear from the F-5As with the control surface actuators and main landing gear from the F-16. What makes the X-29 different is its wings. The forward square wings were mounted well back on the fuselage. The technological advancement that made the X-29 a plausible design was the use of carbon fiber composites. The wings of the X-29 made partially of graphite epoxy were square forward at more than 33 degrees. It had a single vertical tail fin, while no horizontal tail planes. The X-29's horizontal stabilizers to control pitch, the canyons, were in front of the wings instead of on the tail. The complex geometries of the wings and canyons combined to provide exceptional maneuverability, supersonic performance, and a light structure. And moving over the forward square wings tended to flow inward toward the root of the wing instead of outward toward the wingtip as occurs on an aft square wing. This reverse airflow kept the wingtips and their aerolons from stalling at high angles of attack. This H-29 aircraft only has a single seat for test pilot. It has an empty weight of about 6.2 tons, a length of 17.7 meters, a wingspan of 8.29 meters, and a wing area of 17.54 square meters. A General Electric F404 turbofan engine was used, providing thrust up to 71.2 kN. The maximum speed Grumman X-29 reaches was approximately Mark 1.8, equivalent to 1,770 km per hour at an altitude of 10,000 meters. The service ceiling of the Grumman X-29 was about 16,800 meters, but its maximum range was only 560 kilometers. The particular forward square wing, close copper canal design used on the X-29 was highly unstable. 
The aerodynamic instability of the X-39 airframe requires the use of computerized fly-by-wire control continually adjusted the control surfaces with up to 40 commands each second. Each of the three digital flight control computers had an analog backup. If one of the digital computer failed, the remaining two took over. If two of the digital computers failed, the flight control system switched to the analog mode. Research results show that the configuration of forward square wings coupled with movable kernels gave pilots excellent control response at up to 45 degrees angle of attack, higher than comparable fighter aircraft. During its flight history, H-29s were flown on 422 research missions. Aircraft number 1 flew 242 in the phase 1 portion of the program. 120 flights were flown by the aircraft number 2 in phase 2, and 60 flights were completed in a follow-on vortex control phase. Overall, the X-29 program ended without any aircraft being born. However, the program did demonstrate several new technologies as well as new uses of proven technologies. The program provided an engineering database that is available for the design and development of future aircraft. Currently, the H-29 number no. 1 is on display at the National Museum at the Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. Aircraft number no. 2 is on display at the NASA Armstrong Fly Research Center. My video of Grumman H-29 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again.